Hey family, thank you all so much for tuning in. I pray each and every one of you are well. I'm excited to see you guys and to deliver this word into your spirit today. It is a rhema word from the Lord. He had me up at the midnight hour the other day, downloading this word into my spirit for you and for me and for everyone who will receive it. And so I thank you, Lord, for the word. I believe it is going to meet each and every one of you in your midnight hour, meaning a lot of you are at the place where you don't know what God is doing next. He's shifting you again. There's another transition coming and many of you don't understand that how he's shifting you and something's drying up meaning what you've been doing right now but a lot of you are wondering where your harvest is because you have been doing the work for the Lord. Some of you just getting weary in your well doing but the Lord says get ready for explosive growth. He also says that you better be ready to overtake to overtake. So I'm going to dig into this word and release it into your spirit. Father Father, I thank you for a freshing anointing to do so and to relay this message as you have placed it in my spirit to your children in Jesus name. Father, I ask that it fall on fertile ground. I thank you, Lord, that you are our father. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to continue to keep us, that no one can stand against us because you are for us, that you will never forsake us, that you will never leave us in Jesus name. Amen. So you guys. I'm going to get into this word. I also have some scriptures as well. So this is what the spirit of the Lord said. He said, rest and let me do the rest. I love how he rhymes, you guys. I told you he's the number one lyrical genius. So listen, I'm like, rest and let me do the rest. Like, okay, Lord. And he said, this is for all who are active in their assignments in this season. He says, there's a time of resting coming for you. God says, I'm bringing a refreshing wind to comfort the weary. This is for those of you who are growing weary in your well-doing. You are doing the work for the Lord, but you're getting tired, right? Like the work has overtaken you. But God has a twofold message today about overtaking. So first, this work that you're doing has overtaken you where you are stretched thin. So then it is making you become weary in your well-doing. But God knows the intent of your heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And he's saying, I'm sending a refreshing wind to encourage you, to strengthen you in this season. Yes, in your resting season. Thank you, Lord. He says, I'm bringing a refreshing wind to exalt the humble. So this is for those of you who have humbled yourself to the will of God, to the way he wants to do his work through you. And this is Zechariah 4, 6, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. So many of you have been wondering, where is my harvest? Many of you may see others prospering around you and you're wondering, when is my time? When is my turn? And God is saying, not by your might, not by your power, but by my my spirit. You better get ready for explosive growth in Jesus name. And then the Lord says, I'm sending a refreshing wind to enrich the feeble. And this is for those of you who are growing weak, who are ready to quit, who are ready to give up. So the Lord is saying that he is going to en enrich you, the feeble, with his refreshing wind. If you receive his refreshing wind, type those wind emojis in the comments in Jesus' name. And so the Lord says, as I watch from above, many have done what I have instructed tell them I'm well pleased with their obedience. And this is for those of you where the enemy is taunting your minds. He's taunting you or either it's you against you, right? The old you against the new you, the wrestling with God. Come on, Jacob to Israel. God is trying to get you somewhere. He's trying to get you into your new identity and this striving, right? This is part of your warfare along with the mental attack, right? And God is saying, I'm well pleased with your obedience. I see with what you're doing and the enemy, and he has rather been working overtime to keep you in a place of oppression, suppression, and whatever it is. But God is saying, I see from high heaven. I also see what's in your heart and I am well pleased. So for those of you who are going through self-condemnation that falls off of you now by the fire of the Holy Ghost in Jesus name, after the Lord spoke those words, I saw a hand in the spirit. It was just kind of sitting like this and the focus was on the knuckles. And I thought, Lord, why are you showing me this hand? And why am I zoomed in on these knuckles, right? 
And the Lord said, their hands have been the plow. Your hands have been the plow. And now they will reap the harvest. He's talking about everybody who is working, everyone who is doing his will. He's saying that you have put your hands to work, your hands meaning being the plow. And now you're about to reap the harvest. So when the Lord said that, I heard the word overtake. And then the scripture, Amos 9, 13 came into my spirit. And it says, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows the seed. The mountains shall drip sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it. And so I want to break down some key words for you guys because the Lord is not playing around with you. Many of you are about to overtake in a good way. And I'm going to break down overtake. And that means to catch up with and to pass while traveling in the same direction to be to become greater or more successful than to surpass. And so many of you have been distracted because whatever God is having you to do, like your focus is has turned, right? Because you see others prospering around you. You feel like you're doing the same work they're doing. Whatever you're doing for the Lord, whatever business he's told you to start, whatever ministry work, whatever it is, but you've been working, you've been doing what you're supposed to do. And it seems like everybody is passing you up. And the Lord says, you're about to overtake. You're about to surpass. You're about to now reap the harvest, right? This is the plowman taking over or overtaking the reaper. So those who you are watching, those who you are being distracted by in a sense, they are reaping their harvest and it's causing you to feel some kind of way. I remember maybe a couple of days ago or so, I put a post in the comments and a young lady, woman of God was saying the same thing. She said, you know, I'm seeing all these people prospering around me and it brought jealousy in my heart. It brought envy in my heart. And I told her, no, like your time and your turn is coming. Your time and your turn is coming. So receive that word. If that's for you, say my time and my turn is coming. I want to see that in the comments. Thank you, Lord. I'm standing with you guys. And so, yes, there's no need. There's no need to be jealous. There's no need to be envious. There's no need to compare yourself. Each and every one of us are made uniquely. God made each and every one of us uniquely. Nobody has the same fingerprints, right? Which means nobody has the same plow. You have your own plow. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this wisdom. You have your own plow. You have your own assignment. Even if you may be in the same sphere of influence, you're going to be unique to what you're doing. God is going to give you a unique voice. He's going to give you a unique way to do it. And some of you, God is giving you something totally new to do. So wait on him to show you how he wants you to do it. And that's for those of you who are in transition. Yes. And so behold, behold, the days are coming. Behold means to perceive with sight, to gaze or to look upon. And so God is saying, yes, don't you see? Like, behold, don't you see what I am doing? And so I asked the Lord, well, who is the plowman? And the plowman is us, right? This is the one who breaks up the ground to prepare it for the seed to be planted. And so this is what you've been doing in this first assignment as God is about to shift you. You've been preparing the land. You've been preparing the foundation of your business, of your ministry. And that requires a planting of of a seed, right? That requires a cultivation of the seed planted. And this is what you've been doing. And so keep cultivating the seed because it's about to bring a harvest. And again, your harvest is going to overtake the current reapers. Your harvest is just as large, right? And before you're able to gather it all in, it's going to be time for you to start plowing the ground again. And this is your second assignment. So many of you are already in that overflow as you've been working for the Lord and he's shifting you. He's transitioning you. And so you'll have something to eat off of, right? You'll have something to sustain you. Some of you residual income from what you have already been building for the Lord. And now it's time to plow again after you rest up for a little bit, okay? Those of you who are transitioning right now, you're shifting to put the plow into work again, right? To start the next thing. God is interested in getting you to a place where you have seven streams of income. And I'll get into the scripture about that. But the Lord wants you to pay attention to the shift so that you don't end up toiling in what he's trying to transition you from. This is why 
he's filled your basket so much up until this point so that it carries you over into the next thing okay and so there is a difference between a natural finish and a spiritual finish you guys and some of you the lord has been downloading so many ideas into your spirit some of it is for now and some of it is for later like the candy okay and so the lord is going to show you what to work on now he's going to show you what is for the later and so many of you feel like you're not finishing anything and that couldn't be further from the truth all right so sit with the lord to see what he says but pay attention in your spirit when you feel that nudge and that unction that god is shifting you flow with the holy spirit and he'll bring you back around to the book you started he'll bring you back around to the the other business that you started maybe five years ago and it wasn't working at the time yes because it wasn't time for it to be birthed i pray that frees someone in jesus name so i'm going to read ecclesiastes 11 1 through 2 and it says, cast your bread on the surface of the waters, meaning be active in your assignment, be active in building what God is calling you to do, for you will find it after many days. Give a portion to seven or even divide it to eight, for you do not know what misfortune or disaster may occur on the earth. And this is what the Lord has us doing right now in the kingdom, in the body of Christ. He has us in a season of building. He has us in a season of setting things up. So when the world begins to shift in an even more dangerous way, so to speak, God is going to continue to keep his people covered. This is why many of you are starting Christian schools. This is why many of you are starting your ministries. This is why many of you are starting businesses, farmland. Some of you, he has you buying real estate property. He has you buying some of you these refuge homes i said this maybe a couple of years ago that um, the lord showed me a vision of these kingdom hubs and yes many of you will have these hub places where the body of christ can come in for safety right and so god is doing it he's been downloading the unusual idea into your spirit and you know it's him because it's something that you would have never thought of and so just continue to flow with his holy spirit in jesus name so I want to touch on one more thing, you guys, and that is the grapes that we talked about or read about in Amos 9, 13. And so the Lord was reminding me of Eshcol, and these were the big cluster of grapes that the 12 spies brought back to the Israelites to show them the evidence of the abundance in the promised land in Canaan. After they went up to the valley of Eshcol and viewed the land, they discouraged the Israelites, meaning the spies, from entering the land the Lord had given them. And so the Lord is saying, don't let your spying of the land, don't let your knowledge of the land, meaning the assignment, the new thing where God is taking you, maybe the unknown, right? What you don't know, knowing that yes, in spirit, God has you. So many of you, okay, Lord, are afraid of the unknown because you don't know what's next, but God is saying, all right, I wanna build you up in my character. I want you to learn more about me because I'm not taking you to a place of harm. I'm not taking you anywhere to hurt you. Yes, and the things that have happened to you, I am healing you from them, but just know that it is good that you are afflicted, right? It is good that you are afflicted because I'm going to bring you out and I'm gonna bring you out like gold. But the Lord is saying, do not get discouraged in spying out your new assignment, right? And yes, don't be afraid of success either. The Lord says in Deuteronomy 8.18 that he gives us all the power to get wealth. This is the knowledge. This is the creative ideas, right? This is us putting our hands to the plow. And of course, there will be an abundant increase that we may not forget the Lord our God who has blessed us. And so you guys, I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. Get back to get it into your spirit. Thank you all so much for your support, your prayers. Those of you who are sowing so generously into the ministry, may the Lord continue to bless each and every one of you, whatever you're doing, 1,000 fold in Jesus' name. I love you all so much with the love of Christ. Most importantly, Jesus loves you, and I'll talk to you soon.